Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to actually start pulling some data from GitHub but we're not really going to use it directly at the moment and I'll show you what I mean by that in a sec. Just to quickly cover off from the last video, my style, I've set it to padding 90 at the top, padding top 90 and padding 40 there. Um, yeah, I sort of got confused towards the end of the last video on how that should look but that's basically where it needs to be at if you're following along. So GitHub controller, um, what we're going to do is take the profile and so what the first thing we really need to do is create ourselves a profile profile.html.twig and this is going to be the sort of the, the container for our profile like the details so again if we look back at the side this sort of sidebar section here is what we're going to put inside our profile so to keep this separate as it is in in a way its own sort of block um, it just makes sense to put that inside its own template and that sort of gets you into the mindset of sort of modularity so what what we're going to do is is pull this data from github's api but to begin with we're going to sort of fake it um, and i'll show you how as we go through so we're on developer.github.com uh, go to api and then there's the various different endpoints that we can get access to the ones that we're going to be interested in is users and repositories uh, you, as i say you don't actually need uh, any authentication to be able to access either of these you can see that we're just going to hit slash users and then the username um, but what it doesn't really tell you unless you go to i think it's the first result is that you need to put in uh, https github api.github.com um, so yeah a little bit strange there but uh, i assume by the point the way you get down to users it's expected you to have read all the above anyway so what we can do is just go off to api github.com slash users slash code review videos dot com uh, not dot com <laughs> force of habit sorry um yeah, so put in any username that you wish there, your own or whatever, and then you can see, oh, we've got all these bits of data, and the interesting one in this instance straight away is going to be our avatar URL. And we're going to change things up a touch because as we render this out, uh, like this is going to be a list for us, so we're going to like fake it a little bit, and just make it a little bit more interesting from a Symphony point of view, as opposed to just taking it directly from their API just to show you some different concepts really but you could just pull this off entirely and display the fields but yeah for the for the purposes of demo what I'm going to do I'm just going to steal this first bit and notice it's coming back as JSON as well that's uh, important for later so in here inside our profile HTML um, what we're going to do is have a not a, an a we're going to have a source not a, not a source an image even flipping heck what happened there image flip image source and then we're going to pass in something which is going to be our avatar url and that should be enough just to sort of close that off there but we need a class um because this is not going to work particularly well if we don't give it a class but we'll see I, I, in fact i'll leave that off for the moment this thumbnail one is just a, a simple bootstrap thingy like to, to put a little border around it but yeah we'll just leave it like that at the moment and that's going to be uh, good enough so we're going to have our profile and what we could do i suppose for the moment uh, ideally i just kind of want to just want to show just the profile so yeah we'll just go with a new action and we'll just call this one profile action uh, and we'll just put in the request request again we don't really need that at this stage but it's just kind of good habit to get into we need to pop on a route for this as well just so that we can show it off um making sure to use the the correct speech marks so we call this one profile and um, we don't need to pass anything to it at the moment because we're just going to fake the data anyway uh, let's call this one profile close that off return this render and then we're going to render off that profile so profile is under github slash profile html twig and we're not going to even do we need to pass anything in we do because we popped on that that avatar uh, url so we need to declare it avatar url and again this is just a standard php array you could even just pull this out and just call this something like um i don't know properties or something properties equals that and then pass in that properties there's no specialness to, to just inline in the array it's just saves a bit of space looks a bit better um but yeah that is what's happening there so don't be confused by this doesn't have to be in line it's just sort of convention that we do it that way and then i want this avatar url so let's just nick that whole thing and paste that in it just needs to be a string as well and it's going to go off to profile html profile html which is just literally going to render off our thumbnail i hope let's just check what out check that out profile 
and hooray, there I am. Hello, Chris. A uh, bit too big for my liking. Anyway, uh, so that's the gist of it. That's what we're doing. We've got this data that we're pulling back from the API. And at the moment, we're just going to completely fake it, just mock it out and display it in our template. And then later on, we'll, we'll start actually pulling in that data. So I'll just uh, finish off this template. Okay, so just a little bit there, just added in the uh, the name and the login. So those two properties just coming direct from those two fields. We'll get a little bit more interesting with these in a sec, but let's just keep padding out our um, our array. So we've got name, and we're just as as you can see, we're faking the data at the moment. And login in this instance is just going to be your login name. So yeah, uh, code review videos, which is um, all all cool. And then so the next section is if we take a look at the actual the page you've got these four sections here so four links of uh, four bits of text one of them's a link so that's going to make it a little bit more tricky uh, so what we're going to do is just have this this and this joined uh, as as text and then we're going to put this in separately i'll show you exactly what i mean so we're going to jump back into our profile we're going to do an unordered list and then we're going to do this for syntax so we're going to pass in an array here um, and what we're going to do is sort of loop through the, the values in that array. I'm just going to call it detail in details. So so details is going to be the array key. So let's just go back through here. And this is what I mean, details there. And then we're going to have a sub array on that. And so that's how it's going to work through these different um, details that we've got. And then each detail is going to be a list item. So could sort of indent that just to make it a little bit easier to see. And then detail. So notice the that's the array key and then this is the for each item inside that key we're going to get access to something we could just call that d or literally anything you want and um, generally I sort of do it like that just for ease of comprehension i suppose and then you need to make sure that you end the for loop so for a detail in details and then what we're going to do is pop some details in here these are just going to be key values uh, so we're going to pass in company location and created app but we're going to call ours joined at so company location uh, so company Now, interestingly, that's not the way that we're going to get this back for a start off. It's called created at uh, and it's a, a date time or it's a, a sort of JavaScript -y representation or an ISO, ISO date, of however you pronounce that. So we're going to need to do a little bit of PHP magic with that. But for the moment, we're just going to leave it uh, faked anyway. So it's not really going to matter. And then we've got the concept of blog, which is, um, yeah, which is like something that we're going to keep separate in our case. We're just going to call that we're going to leave it as blog but as I say it's not going to be part of that details array uh, so I'll show you what I mean by that so what it's going to do is it's going to loop through all those three items and then just underneath there but still inside the unordered list I'm going to have that um, link to the blog what on earth happened there link yeah well no wonder because I'm not even typing in the right thing uh, and this is going to be a link to the blog and just close that off and also call that blog and you can go ahead and put in some nice icons if you want but for for the purposes of this i'm not going to bother uh so hr and then so if we render this off now which which is our tab this one should be getting a little bit more data you can see there that we're just sort of faking it out and then this this url one's at the bottom because it's not inside our list um but yeah that's the gist of it and i'm going to do the same with our followers starred and following and probably not going to be able to get all of those properties so i'm just going to change them up a touch um, and we can see that i'm going to go with repos followers and following so i'll just steal those properties out so i don't forget them pop them inside git hook controller and just just drop them in there even though they're not going to render out properly at the moment until i go back through and do the same thing again So again, I'm doing something a little bit different here. Uh, as you see from GitHub, when you get this back, it's not going to be inside a subarray. I'm going to do that later on, sort the data out. Um, but what I want to do is just pop them inside this social data 
Gifts uh, Array or, yeah, Social Data Array. And then I'm going to have these three properties in there. But I do actually care about the names of the things that I'm taking from here. So what I'm going to do is just going to remove that public underscore repos thing, um, the, the underscore, so I can use that and maybe just tidy this up a touch. So I'll just give them... In fact, what you could do is just uh, use a twig filter to, to uppercase or UC words them. I'm not going to bother for the purposes of this. I, what I want is basically the key and the value in this case. That's the important thing that I'm really wanting to show you. So what you can do is just do for key value. Again, you can call these anything, but um, it's just the same syntax, but it gives you access to both the key and the value in social data. And then what I can do is just reference both of those parts. Okay, so to very quickly cover what's going on here, I've just added in some uh, spans because if we look at the, the sidebar on uh, GitHub, you can see that the numbers are bigger here than the, the text underneath. So that's that's all that's going on there. I'm just going to add in some uh, bits of CSS to make that look a little bit nicer. Then the value and key. So if we take a, another look back at this, this uh, social data array, this is going to get passed in just the array. So what this is going to do is it's going to split them out into keys and values and what I want to do is display in as we'll see the the key is that text the bit of text that we've sort of uh, used as as our array key uh, public repos for example and then the value is like 11 so that's what's going to give us that that formatting that we're expecting and then again if we refresh this now we should see the data that we're interested in now I probably don't want these as styled lists either so I'm going to, just going to add in a class of uh, list unstyled and I want these ones these bottom ones to uh, display in line so I'm just going to add a list in line and those are just bootstrap specific styles that you get for free uh, so if we refresh that now it's it's fine it looks all right but it we now need to pop this back inside our, our main layout so if we just go back to to the here we want to pop it on the sidebar here so let's figure out how to do that so the first thing i'm going to do is just change the uh the base a touch and put inside our container here i'm going to then create another div which is going to be called class well it's just going to have a class of row so again bootstrap specific concepts here uh, if you're using a different framework then uh, do do whatever it is that you need to do to make this look okay but these are the basics for bootstrap so i'm just going to put everything inside a a row and then everything should align roughly give or take now next we want our profile to display and we've, we've gone ahead and put it inside a separate template but for the moment i'm just going to show you the sort of the naive way of doing it and i'm just going to paste this directly in so remember we're now wrapped inside that row so if i paste this in uh, and then what i could do for example is put something like a div class call small three so it's only going to be sort of a, a three column effort and then just uh, paste that inside there. That should wrap us inside. And then I'm going to need to change this up a touch to pass the profile data that we've just created into our, our um, index instead. So let's just go ahead and do that. Paste that in. Got too many commas. Silly me. Right, save that off. Now, we can just get rid of this entirely for the moment. Just comment that entire thing out. So let's just uh, command and uh, forward slash on... Uh, PHP Storm, and then if we go back to our index and refresh this, now you can see it's working in a fashion, but that image is vastly too large. So you, what we want to do is have another column in here where we're going to have our um, a, a column. So Bootstrap's got the concept of twelve columns, a twelve column layout. So if we did another column for our repositories and we called that col small nine, which takes us nine and three up to twelve. Um, then if we put something inside here, some some text, and then refresh that, then whilst you can't really see it too well, that, that's been completely overlaid. And the reason being is that that image is not getting properly sized, which is why I said just before we are going to need to pop another thing on there. It's just image responsive, which is what's going to sort that problem out for us, I hope. Ah, and I also need to remember that I've just sort of copy pasted that template and completely confused myself as to why that wasn't working. Uh, so image responsive and refresh that. So yeah, there we go. That's that's fixed that sidebar problem. Now, it's, of course, it's all fake data um, and we just need to style that properly as well. So let's just quickly update this my style to add in a nicer style.
Okay, so not perfect, but good enough for the purposes of what we're trying to do. So that's really the sidebar that we've got going on. Um, as I say, we've popped this into uh, the, the index template itself, and that's the sort of the naive way of doing it. So we can do better than this, and we will just uh, very quickly do a, a cheeky refactoring on this. Now, what's interesting really is to notice that the profile itself has no wrapper around it. The wrapper itself lives inside index. The reason for doing this, honestly, is that this keeps your profile reusable inside other layouts, should you wish to. It's not sort of very tightly bound to being inside a call small three or, or whatever, which means that you can have, you know, potentially reuse this if you need to in some other layout where you're not that bothered about it, it spanning across multiple columns or whatever. As I say, we've got it separated out into its own profile. So what we can do is just delete all that from there. And we can use the twig include syntax. So include and then the template name that we're interested in. Now the template naming structure inside Symphony is a little confusing, honestly. And I'll link to a better sort of documentation around this in the show notes, as this used to confuse me no end. Um, but essentially it's looking for a bundle first, which we don't have because of this is sort of a legacy sort of fallover from previous versions of Symphony where they recommended a different structure to your uh, to your views. So your views used to live inside your bundles directory, um, depending on which bundle you were in, depending on what you put first. But in our case, so in the olden days, you would have done something like app bundle and then the the folder that it was living in and and so on and you end up with this strange syntax where you've got colon colon etc anyway now we don't live inside the views uh, we don't live inside the bundles directory by sort of uh, best practice so you generally start with a colon um, which, as I say is a little bit confusing and then the next thing that you do is you look at the directory that you're in so in our case we're going to be in github and then another colon, and then the name of the template that we want to include. So profile.html.twig. That should be pretty much it. You can pass data into uh, into your includes, but in this instance, we don't need to because we're already passing it in from the, the, the top level. So this should just work, and it's going to replace what we've hard-coded with our, our template, even though you're not really going to see it. If then um, I take that out and just refresh it, it's disappeared and then pop it back in and it appears. So really that's starting to become a little bit more modular, but we will come to an, a, a different sort of refactoring around this in a future video.